Hello and welcome to the Unit 8 podcast on Section 18.2. Today we're going to talk about things that affect equilibrium. I'm Mr. Sakaguchi. I'm Mr. Lin. And here we go. So, if we're going to talk about um, how, system, how equilibrium systems react to changes, uh, we're talking about Le Chatelier's principle. He basically stated that if you apply a stress to a system in equilibrium, the system will shift to relieve the stress. And it, as it is quantifiable, and this shift means that the forward or, forward or reverse reaction will occur in order to cause less stress on the system. So, yeah, so when we say shift, we mean how it's going to react to the stress. So we're talking about concentrations of the products or the reactants. And these can be uh, changed by either the concentrations, temperature, or volume or pressure. And we'll be discussing the effect of each one. Right. So let's first talk about what happens if we change the reactant concentrations. Okay. So we can affect reactant concentration by either adding or removing reactant. And so the, be the way we kind of use to explain this is to use kind of a teeter-totter to express or to kind of visualize equilibrium. So let's say we had A plus B uh, making C and D. And this is a reversible reaction and it's balanced at equilibrium. Okay, if we add either A or B, and if this was truly a teeter-totter, the shift would be like this. In order for it to rebalance itself, it would have to basically make more C and D, or shift to the right, to in order to rebalance itself. So that's how it would respond to the stress. So a way to look at it is, whatever side um, goes up is the side that is the direction that the equilibrium will shift. So as you can see on the right-hand side with removing a reactant, so removing either A or B, which are reactants, we remove something on the reactant side, and as a result, the reactant side elevates, and so we will see an increase in a reaction rate towards our reactant side. And again, this is the shift in order to, re to try and rebalance itself. We can also do the same thing with product concentration. So again, we can either add product or remove it. And again, we're at equilibrium, so everything's balanced. If we add either C or D, what ends up happening is you end up with an imbalance that kind of visually looks like this. And then in order to rebalance itself, we need to shift to the left or make more A and B uh, to establish equilibrium. Same thing on the other end, where you're removing product, you remove C, C or D. And as a result, um, the right-hand side of the equation uh, Right hand side of the equation shifts upwards, so it, we say that the, the equilibrium is shifting to the right or shifting towards product. More product as a result is going to be made. Right. Um, in addition to changing concentrations, we can also change the temperature. Now, the temp you know, when we change the temperature, it's going to make a difference whether or not we have an exothermic reaction or an endothermic reaction. So what we're talking about here are exothermic reactions only. And if we're talking about changing temperature, we can either raise the temperature or lower it. Okay. Now, with exothermic reactions, the energy is going to be on the right-hand side. So it's almost like if it was a product. So when we, add, when we raise the temperature, that's adding energy, and that's like adding product. And so what ends up happening is we have, we have an imbalance that looks like this, and we end up shifting to the left and making more reactant in order to, in order to reestablish equilibrium. Same thing like previously when you're removing any other product. Since energy is our quote-unquote product in an exothermic reaction, we remove the energy that's lowering the temperature, that's relieving stress on the right-hand side, and as a result, the equilibrium will shift to the right-hand side because the right-hand side of our teeter-totter is the part that's going up. Now, for endothermic reactions, <coughs> the energy is on the left-hand side, not on the right-hand side. So now it's like a reactant. So when we add, when we, when we decrease the temperature, that's like removing reactant. And when we remove reactant, um, we get an imbalance that looks like this and we end up shifting to the left, we make more reactant in order to counteract it. Same thing on the other end, where if we increase the temperature, what we're doing is we're adding to the reactant side, and as a result, there's a shift towards our right-hand side now, causing an increase in production of C and D. We can also have changes in volumes or pressures, and this is basically um, another special situation. When we're, when we're looking at gases and things like that, we have to, it, it depends, it matters what side has the greater number of moles of gas. 
okay? If you look at this reaction here, um, if we add up the total moles of gas by adding up the coefficients, notice that there are four moles of gas on the left-hand side and two moles of gas on the right-hand side. So what we're talking about here is based upon a situation where there are more moles of gas on the left-hand side or reactant side than the right-hand side, okay? If, um, okay, so if we increase the volume or decrease the pressure, what's going to end up happening is it, we're going to favor a shift in the direction where there are more, more moles of, of um, more total moles of gas. So since there are more moles of gas on the left-hand side, the shift would be to the left. It's actually also similar to looking at it as, a, as amount of space that gas will take up. So as a result of having more moles on the left-hand side, and since we have more moles of gas, it's going to need more space, we increase the volume or decrease the pressure. As a result, there will be more room for the equilibrium to shift towards the left-hand side. The opposite is also true, where with the same equation, if we decrease the volume or increase the pressure, same concept, um, as a result of that, we have less room, increased pressure, and as a result, the, it will, the equilibrium will shift towards the right because we have less space. Because whereas we had four moles of gas on the left, there's only two moles of gas on the right, the equilibrium will favor the right-hand side because it requires less space. And then here's a situation where we change the volume of pressure where there are more moles on the right-hand side. So again, notice there are four moles on the right and only two moles on the left. So if I increase the volume or decrease the pressure, we end up with an imbalance. And because of that, it's going to, again, favor the side with the greater um, total moles of gas. Opposite, again, still true. When you decrease the volume and, or increase the pressure, when you do that, you're going to favor the side that's going to take up less space. So that would be the left-hand side, and that's the side, that's the direction that the equilibrium will shift. It's going to shift towards the left because it needs less space. A couple things to note with this is that make be mindful of what your reactants and products are because if they're not gases, you're not going to count them towards the total mole values. Right. Also, the other thing to keep in mind is if the total moles are equal, if the total moles are equal on both sides, then changing the volume of pressure will have no effect on the system at equilibrium. Okay. Oh, and I just which said is, that. Which is shown here, right. Okay. Um, so changing the volume of pressure is no shift. Catalysts will get you to equilibrium faster, but again, catalysts will have no effect on equilibrium either. Right, so this is when you have equal moles uh, on both sides of the reaction for gases. And I think that's it. Yep.